Hey everybody, check out my rack. Let's depower it, come on. Hey guys, Sean here, Boosted Miata. So my list that I started when I was doing my refresh on my motor is growing. I've actually added an additional thing and that is a rack depower. The reason I did that is recently on YouTube, Greg from the Car Passion channel, he ran a nice little tutorial. He did a nice little tutorial about depowering your rack on your Miata. It's really good, check it out. I'm gonna be following his tutorial. Plus I'm gonna do things a little differently. I'm gonna mess around with the pinion. I'm not gonna weld it, but I am going to try to use some bearing adhesive, some Loctite bearing adhesive to take the slop out of that pinion. So let's get busy. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and uh, loosen up the inner uh, tie rod from the outer tie rod. And you need to do this on both sides. This is the driver's side. So this, this nut here needs to be backed off. And then once you back this off, like Greg shows in his video, you can just mark the threads of the tie rod uh, right here with a marker. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and back that off. I've already loosened it. <laughs> so once you back that off, you take a little uh, paint marker and just kind of mark your threads to get you back close to where you were. It's not going to make your alignment perfect, but it's better than just eyeballing it. All right, then you want to take a 12 millimeter and start backing out the tie rod. So I want to pull off the steering, steering column. Ah, oh, crap. out. Alright then. Oh, we need the big guns for this one. So we got four 17 millimeter hex heads that hold the rack to the subframe. That's got to come out. Alright. We got two more over here. There's my rack. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get all these little tubes out of the way, get that all the way, and then we'll start disassembling uh, everything else. But it's fun. A little flat head uh, or a punch and a hammer and just kind of hit these until the tabs fold up. These tie rod ends, uh, inner tie rod connectors, because oh my god, this was a pain to get off. All right, let's get started on some of them. I just lost my little cool little label that had the Japanese symbol on there. Sucks. JDM. <laughs> Universal joint, off. All right, talk to me, Greg. Yes. All right. Adjuster out. So I can already tell that there are a few differences between the NA rack and the NB rack, clearly. The NB, at least the NB2 rack, which I didn't even think about. I hate Torx. I really hate Torx. But it appears to be a T40. Alright, second one out. And she doesn't want to come out. Hey! 
and she's out. Okay, pinion is out. There is the pinion. So I got this little hex cap right here. Hex nut thing that looks like that needs to come off. This is the passenger side uh, cap. You can see I kind of mangled the hex there, but it'll be all right. All right, so, oh, hello. And there she is. So there's the rack out of the case. So this has got to get ground off. So I got to get organized and get that done. Safety first, guys. Always safety first. Done. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's, it's a Halloween night. Whoa, look at that sweat. Kids are coming over for some trick-or-treating with Grandpa, so I'm going to wrap this thing up, clean everything up, and get back to it maybe later tonight. But um, it's fitting it's Halloween because this was scary. So what I want to do is I want to take this thing apart. Now, there is no locking rings. I'm pretty sure this just pulls apart. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to take this housing, and it should come out that way, that way. So I'm just going to bang on this end and hopefully it pops out. Yep, yeah, there it goes. So that's that. And the only thing that popped out with it was this O-ring. On this pinion, what I want to do is I want to take off all this crap here. We don't need it. It's just held on with this locking ring right here. This should just pull right off and sure does. Okay, cool. This rack has the same issues that the earlier rack has when it comes to the pinion having this little built-in flexing that's kind of built into it. There's some space in here to allow the hydraulic fluid to get into here and force its way through the circular valve deal here. But to show you what what happens, let me just grab it really quick and watch carefully. Hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the top part. You can see it, you can see it moving, but the bottom part is still. So that's the play that people talk about when they depower the rack. So the solution, I'm not gonna weld because I don't have a TIG welder, a welder of any kind actually. So I'm going to put Loctite right now inside of this um, opening here. There's a little bit of opening here. So I'm just going to drip some Loctite. So I've got some uh, Loctite 680. And this is a um, retaining compound Loctite. So it's very strong. But I'm just going to pour a little bit. Hopefully I can get it in there. You can see there I have a bead of this stuff. Trying to get it to flow down into the channels. I'm going to let this dry. Then I got to clean all this stuff up and I'll be back when I'm ready to assemble this thing. All right, see you then. I'm ready to assemble this thing now. I've got all my bits and pieces ready to go. For all these plugs that go on the housing, instead of just putting sealant in here, I decided to go ahead and make it look a little nicer. I put sealant in the plugs themselves and I'll screw those in to the housing. So this is all ready to go. So I'm going to get busy and reassemble all this. I think I'm going to put some gloves on. torque wrench like this this one I got from Harbor Freight 
Uh, just set, you can set it to like three and a half foot pound, and that is 43 inch pound. So what you want to do is one, two, three. I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> that is way too tight. I'm telling you that right now. There's no way that's going to work, so I'm totally off here. So I'm going to save this for later. So for now, I'm just going to call it good. And I can always torque it later well, when it's on the car. Go ahead and put in all my plugs. Good torque wrench and I got it set to 43 inch pounds I don't know if you can see that but it's set up right All right, guys, I think I'm about done. I just have to tighten up uh, some bolts that go into the subframe. I've got the rack in the car. You can see there it's in. I just have to finish getting these bolts in and getting the uh, steering column or whatever rod <laughs> into the universal joint. And uh, I repainted it because it looked like shit after I, got, I mangled it in the uh, vise, which really pissed me off. This was interesting. This was not as easy as I thought it was going to be, and I really should have done my, my homework in the beginning, uh, but it was a good experience. I hope you guys learned a lot watching me. I hope I saved you some trouble if you came across this video and doing your research uh, and found this video. Hopefully it saved you some problems. Next video, I'm going to be finishing up my VVT on the motor. I actually painted the valve cover with uh, wrinkle paint. It looks great. So I'm going to be working on that actually a little later tonight and I'll post a separate video about me finishing the VVT. All right. So thanks again, everyone. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, why don't you just leave them below. And if you like my videos, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a like and if you'd subscribe, that'd be great. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. 7 PSI, 8 PSI, hold it. I've got a problem here. I can't hold it. She's breaking up. She's breaking up.